Samsung remains as committed as ever to the foldable smartphone market and is one of the very few manufacturers still releasing this type of phone outside of China. Still, despite this relative lack of competition, the company continues to evolve and refine the original foldable. It might not feature huge changes from the previous model, but the changes made in the Z Fold 4 have made a noticeable difference to the experience of using it. I'm Cam Bunton from Pocketlint, and this is our review. And while you're here, if you do like it, please do leave a thumbs up, subscribe, and tap the notification bell to make sure you don't miss any more. Now, despite the overarching idea mostly staying the same, the small differences in design have improved the product considerably, especially when compared to the first model, but even when compared to 2021's Z Fold 3. The aesthetic changes are subtle, but give the device a look with cleaner lines. Samsung's so-called armor aluminium edges extend ever so slightly further up the edges and offer a clean border to the stunning gray-green matte glass on the back of our unit. And not only does the stronger aluminium frame make it more durable than before, it's also the most waterproof foldable phone with an IPX8 rating, which means it can survive up to 30 minutes in a meter and a half of water. In short, if you drop it in the sink, it will be absolutely fine. While all these attributes are great, it's the change in the shape and the size that make this phone feel different to its predecessor. It's shorter and slightly wider when shut, and that means Samsung's been able to put in a slightly more usable cover display, and it makes one-handed use with the phone shut more easy and intuitive. You don't really feel like you're using a skinny, narrow display anymore. It's not quite at normal smartphone display shape, but it's an improvement nonetheless. As with any foldable, the necessity for it to open and shut means there's a hinge, and that means there are very small gaps along the spine of the phone, and that means dust and, as we found out, sand can get in. There's nothing more anxiety-inducing than hearing a phone crunch as you open and close it because sand found its way into the hinge after being placed in a shorts pocket. So, if you want our advice, make sure your pockets are clean of any fluff or grit or anything before you put this phone in it. It didn't damage anything, thankfully, and there's no gap under the display, so all the important elements are protected. And after a day or two, the opening and shutting went back to its usual smooth self. We don't often praise fingerprint sensors, especially side-mounted physical ones, which regularly suffer with phantom touches. With Samsung's latest Fold, though, that didn't happen once. Even when we deliberately pressed our palm against it to see if it would try and register like some do, it didn't. So Samsung's fingerprint scanners aren't easily fooled. It was an impeccable experience. Moving on to the screens now, and Samsung knows how to make great displays and how to get the most out of them. And it shows on the Z Fold 4. Both panels are bright, color-rich, and vibrant. The default calibration will likely be a bit too saturated for the purists out there, but you do get to choose a more natural, less saturated view as well if you want to. That large, flexible display on the inside does have a slight crease in it. It's not really all that noticeable when the screen is on and you're using it, but you can feel it when you swipe your finger or thumb across the display. Likewise, the under-display selfie camera, which hides beneath the big panel, is visible at times too. Like the crease, it's most visible when the screen is off and light reflects on it. But with the screen on, it's almost like it's not there. You can see it if you look closely, but it's very much ignorable. The displays then, both of them, are more than capable of delivering a great visual experience. In terms of brightness, color, contrast, and sharpness, they're great. If you can put up with the excessive pillar boxing due to their unusual aspect ratios, you'll not find much to complain about. And when gaming, the graphics usually fill the entire internal display, making the most of that extra real estate. However, with those visuals being increased in size, we did notice a lack of sharpness, which comes from blowing everything up to much larger sizes. We don't often tend to focus a lot on software in our reviews, but with the Z Fold 4, it was impossible not to. Because hardware and design and displays, of course, make up an important part of how you'll experience using a Z Fold, but arguably, to get the most out of it, you'll need to take advantage of the software it's loaded with. Samsung has leveraged the versatility of Google's Android 12L software with One UI 4.1.1, which takes better advantage of the larger display. A big part of the experience is centered on multitasking. Having the ability to have two apps side by side in virtually full screen makes copying content and information between them very convenient. And the taskbar at the bottom makes it even easier than before to get into that mode. You can just drag and drop an app and have it take up one half or a quarter of the display. Likewise, you can fold the display to a right angle and sit it up with video playing on the top half and controls on the bottom when watching video through Chrome or Samsung's internet app. It's a surprisingly convenient experience being able to just put the phone down with a video playing and not have to hold it. In classic Samsung style though, One UI isn't without its frustrations. 
Samsung preloads its phone with a few additional apps that are largely redundant, and while supporting Google's autofill assistant and payment services, the software by default tries to nudge you in the direction of using Samsung's own. Moving on to performance and battery, and regardless of where you buy your Z Fold 4, you'll get the Snapdragon 8 Plus Gen 1. So the resulting performance that comes from it is exceptional. Interface elements glide smoothly under the finger, offering responsive animations, even in apps like Twitter that are usually a little troublesome. The Fold 4 flies. There's no moment where we felt the experience was laggy or slow. Of course, part of this is to do with the processing, and also down to the 120Hz refresh rates of the display, which seem to kick into gear as soon as they're needed. We didn't see any stuttering like we've seen on previous Samsung models from earlier in the year. It's a similar experience when putting time into our favourite game titles like Mario Kart Tour or Real Racing 3. Everything is smooth and effortless, and it doesn't get noticeably warm under load either, unless you really push it hard. One area that will suffer when you put lots of time into gaming on the big internal screen is battery life. But then that's expected. When you have a display much larger than the norm and a battery that's very much not larger than the norm, you'll probably notice a similar drop in battery juice. With our own typical usage, around 3 hours of screen time, we'd have somewhere around 30% left over from the battery. With a regular smartphone with a similar sized battery, that would likely be around 40% with our own typical usage, so it could definitely benefit from having a larger battery. Now on to cameras, and the main camera loadout feels just like using any of Samsung's other flagship phones for the most part, and offers similar quality and versatility to the likes of the S22 series models. The strong primary lens is joined by an ultrawide and a telephoto zoom which reaches 3 times optical and up to 30 times digital. Now, pushing the camera out to these extreme ends of the zoom length often meant it struggled to focus properly, and while it does get you impossibly close to far away objects, the end result is quite mushy and lacking in detail and colour. Anything past 10 times zoom using this hybrid zooming tech is generally where it starts to fall apart quite badly. Still, there's a good balance of colour and quality between the three lenses. Despite their different sensor and pixel layouts, it's refreshing to see the results across all three cameras all look like they came from the same phone. Shots have that classic Samsung colour-rich and saturated approach, so blues are blue and greens are green. It gives them that healthy pop factor. It's only when light levels drop that we notice differences in the capabilities of the cameras. Away from bright daylight indoors, the ultrawide would produce quite crushed dark shots with lots of noise, particularly in the shadows. Using night mode was almost pointless on the Ultra Wide 2, with it not being able to really draw much extra light in at all. One of the best things about the cameras isn't the cameras at all though, it's the clever use of the external cover displays and hand gestures that elevate the experience. At least, they do if you like taking selfies. With the phone open, you can use the cover screen as the camera's monitor, and then use any of the three main cameras on the back of the phone to take selfies, rather than rely on the poorer quality selfie cameras. And you can just hold your palm up to the screen to activate a three second countdown, giving you enough time to move your palm away, smile and let it capture your portrait. The resulting images are so much more dynamic and rich in detail and colour that it's worth the extra fiddling to open up the phone, set the cover screen as the selfie display and to take them. Otherwise the selfie camera in the cover display still does a good job of snapping a decent selfie with good colour and detail. We'd avoid using the under display camera on the main display however, its low resolution and the added layer between the lens and the subject means images are generally a little hazy. Now overall, clearly the Z Fold 4 is still something of a niche or specialist device, and one we think will likely be massively outsold by its cuter and more portable sibling, the Z Flip 4, but with the subtle changes to the shape and the size making the outer display more usable, and the tweaks in software to take advantage of the larger internal display, it's a more refined experience than any large screen foldable on the market. It is very expensive though. Let me know what you think of the Z Fold 4 in the comments down below, or you can grab me on Twitter. I'm at Cam Bunton over there. Again, if you do like this video, please do leave a thumbs up. It helps us a great deal. Subscribe and tap the notification bell to make sure you don't miss any more. And I'll see you again in the next one. Bye for now.